Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 60, which is, the title is Guaranteed. Uh, and it, the title is Appanakatta Sutra. Appanakat Sutra. Right? Uh, so, now this discourse, let me be clear, it's a, a bit, you know, it's a long, long discourse and uh, uh, it's a very, you know, uh, verbose discourse. Right? So, I'm just sharing my, my, learning as a summary right you can definitely read the discourse it's like 10 15 pages long but what i could gather from this discourse uh, i'm just sharing that so the link to the entire discourse is given in the description so it was once that buddha was wandering in the land of the kosalans so the brahmins and householders of sala sala they came to know about buddha that the realized one the fully awakened one has come so they went up to sala and they sat down, you know, in front of the Buddha. So then Buddha asked that, uh, 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 have you found a teacher that you are happy with, in whom you have acquired grounded faith? They said, no, sir, we have not found such a teacher. So Buddha said, since you haven't found a teacher you are happy with, you should undertake and um, implement this guaranteed teaching. For, so now Buddha is like promising. He is giving a guarantee, right? Buddha, say, Buddha says, for when the guaranteed teaching is undertaken, it will be for your lasting welfare and happiness. And what is the guaranteed teaching? Now, now here Buddha is giving about the differentiation between right view, looking at things in the right view and versus the wrong view. Right? So, if you have the right view, then you are reborn in the places of heaven and the higher realms. If you have the wrong view, you are reborn in the lower realms. So, there are in all 31 realms of existence. So, Buddha is now picking up certain wrong views and then you know explaining that this is the wrong view right so for example buddha is saying that some ascetics and brahmins who have this doctrine and view there is no meaning in giving that means there is no point in giving anything generosity holds no meaning or giving sacrifice or offerings there is no fruit or results of good and bad deeds that means there is no law of karma there is no afterlife that means only this life there is no afterlife there is no such thing as mother and father or beings that are born spontaneously. And there is no ascetic or Brahman who is rightly comported and rightly practiced and who describes the afterlife after realizing it. That means there is no person who has realized himself. Right? And then there are some ascetics who directly contradict. They believe they have realized the meaning in giving, sacrifice. There are fruits of results of good and bad deeds. Then Buddha says, what do you think householders? Don't these doctrines directly contradict each other? So the householders said, yes, sir, they directly contradict. So, now Buddha said, since this is so, consider those ascetics who, whose views is that there is no meaning in giving. You can expect that they will reject good conduct. Because if they, if they feel that there is no meaning in giving, then they will reject good conduct by way of body, speech and mind and undertake and implement bad conduct. Why is that? Because those ascetics don't see that unskillful qualities are full of drawbacks, sordidness and corruption and that skillful qualities. So because they do not believe in giving and the right things, they will continue to do all the wrong things, right? And they do not realize the drawbacks. Moreover, since there is another world, their view that there is no other world is a wrong view. Since there is actually another world, their thought that there is no other world is wrong thought. Right? So, Buddha is talking all the, you know, the Noble Eightfold Path is right view, right intention, everything. So, they are practicing all the wrong Noble Eightfold, wrong Eightfold Path. That means they are having a wrong view, then they are having wrong thought. Since there actually is another world, their speech is wrong speech. So, they practice this thing, they say that there is no meaning in giving. That is like practicing wrong speech. Right? Since there is actually another world, in saying that there is no other world, they contradict those perfected ones who know the other world. Since they act there actually is another world, in convincing another that there is no other world, they are convincing them to accept the untrue teaching. And on account of that, they glorify themselves and put others down. So they give up their formal ethical conduct and are established in unethical conduct. And that is how these many bad unskillful qualities come to be with wrong view as a condition. Wrong view, wrong thought, wrong speech, contradicting noble ones, convincing others to accept untrue teachings and glorifying oneself and putting others down. Now, then Buddha says about a sensible person, that a sensible person, then he reflects on this matter, 
that if there is no other world, when this individual's body breaks up, they will keep themselves safe. And if there is another world, when their body breaks up, they will be reborn in a place of loss. Right? So all that is explained here. Right? So this is like one thing that is explained and then there are certain other wrong views that Buddha has explained. I will not go into that. Otherwise, this video will go into like a half an hour video. So you can read at your end. But Buddha basically is saying that cultivate the right view. Do not get stuck into wrong view. Because if you hold wrong views that there is no afterlife, there is no meaning in giving, there is no meaning in having an ethical conduct, then what you will do, you will preach the same thing. Right? And that will, you know, you are practicing wrong speech, wrong thought, everything wrong. And you are moving on the wrong path, which will lead you to rebirth in the lower realms. So, change your view. Right? Move from wrong view to right view. So, here basically this sutta is an important sutta. Uh, with re respect to the one of the noble paths which is right view so there this sutra is is like you can read this sutra about right view right then towards the end buddha says four kinds of people are there in the world this is also uh, buddha has expressed th this in other uh, some discourses like four kinds of people one category one who modify themselves committed to the practice of they modify themselves Give, give pain to themselves. Second, who give pain to others. Third, who give pain to themselves as well as the others. Fourth, who doesn't give pain to themselves, doesn't give pain to others and they live, live without wishes in the present life, extinguished, cooled, experiencing bliss which self becomes divine. Right? So, Buddha explains all the four types of people. That first is, who modifies themselves, who are like people who practice those ex extreme ascetic practices. Like at Buddha's time, there were those Jain, Jain monks who were, you know, practicing very much extreme kind of practices. They are like who are tormenting themselves. That is wrong, right? Second, mortifies others, right? These are people who are butchers, like who who kill people or who harm people, other people, like butcher, pigs. You know, person is a butcher, executioner, fisher, bandit, butcher of cattle, jailer, some other cruel livelihood, right? So that is the second category. Third category, mortifies themselves or others. Now, this is a people who, you know, gives pain to himself by performing, you know, in performing those rituals and sacrifices and also does animal sacrifices and all those things. So, he, he gives pain to himself as well as to other person. And the fourth category is, who doesn't mortify himself or others is the person who practices the Noble Eightfold Path. That means he follows the teaching of the Buddha. His mind becomes immersed in Samadhi. Right, he re recollects, or uh, the he gets the three. No, he gets the four absorptions. He gets the three knowledges, and he finally frees himself, liberates himself. Right. So the learning here is, from this discourse, is that have the right view. Right. What Buddha has shared the teaching. Let's have that right view. No, let us not get stuck in the wrong views. That is why, friends, what is important is to come in the Buddha's teaching and read about what Buddha has taught. That's what my attempt is. See, I am not sharing anything. I am not. I am myself a student. But my aim is that in coming across these videos, I want your interest to come up. That you know, start reading the discourses, because somewhere when we read the discourses, it sometimes looks, I know, complicated because the language and all was of that time and all. But somewhere we come across the same thing again and again, our viewers, views become purified. Right? And second is follow the noble eightfold path. Then we will become people who do, are neither mortifying themselves, not mortifying others. That means practicing ethical conduct, developing our mind and having the wisdom which is right view. Right? So this is the Apanaka, Apanaka Sutta. I hope this was useful. This sharing that I have done was useful in some way. Uh, do share, share your learnings in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.